So welcome on the show. Thank you. How was it like joining this cast? Since I know the cast now is such a family, yeah. was it easy getting along with everybody on the set? Oh yeah, I mean like it's a, a bunch of really warm, fun, happy, positive Latin people mm -hmm. uh, all day <laughs> with tons of food available. That's all the time. best. What yeah. type of food they had on set? Oh, everything. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, everything. Everything. It was like, yeah, but it's just like everyone's grandmother was there. You know, like, really. It's just like eat more, eat more. That's yeah. the best. So you feel like you're in grandma's house, basically. Yeah, yeah we, we had like an elote cart come. Oh, perfect. Yeah, elote cart was unreal. Famous Although I got mad because they put. They put mayo on it instead of crema, but whatever. <laughs> so tell me a little bit more about your character on the show. Um, Nico is a new character on the show who comes in as a, as a kind of outside perspective on what's going on with the bar and the changes okay. that it's going through and, and becomes involved uh, in managing the bar, helping mm -hmm. run it, and um, kind of helping Emma and Lynn and Eddie kind of navigate their relationship to each other. Besides the uh, LGBTQ presence in the show, what mm -hmm. else intrigued you with joining the cast when you first heard about it? Specifically about not just being a, another queer character on TV. Okay. Um, uh, offering more than just, uh, and, and being more than just another, you know, like Mexican-American character on Absolutely. TV. Uh, it, this is a person who's ethnically diverse within herself mm -hmm. and, uh, and and has so much more to say about herself and, and her experience than just her sexuality or ethnicity. And I think that that's a really important thing and it's actually one of the bigger themes in the show itself. So okay. it was cool to, to come on as that, like, you know, to, to have a job that's almost political in its message when it's really just fun art is really cool. And then Eddie. I feel like everybody's gravita gravitating towards that character on the show. How was it like playing Eddie? It was a gift like what a great character to have uh, such a great arc uh, to be able to get into the nitty-gritty of emotions mm -hmm. like after 20 takes or whatever it takes mm -hmm. to get it or two how easy it is to work with everybody it's just easy and so it, it's it's uh, easy to like be the vessel um, I think as a as a character is like the heart you know it, it she pumps and bleeds and all that. You see Absolutely. it all. You're like the fly on the wall. You're like, oh, que va pasar? What's this? Oh. <laughs> and so, and, and, and because Eddie's so vulnerable and the, ca and the, and the it's written to be like, the camera's right there capturing all the stuff that you don't, other people don't see. Yeah. The, the audience is like, we're the only ones that get to see it. The other people didn't see it. Like the other characters didn't see it. Mm -hmm. So we're like in it all together. Yeah. And we're on this ride together. And it's like people kid that relate to Eddie because they have to hide that part a lot of times. Or they got to like, or they're criticized size for it mm -hmm. being wearing their heart on their sleeve so yeah. that's why I think everybody no matter who is relating to it I absolutely agree because I felt that as well through your character and so many fans knew I was coming in to interview you <laughs> and the first thing they wanted me to ask you was will Eddie finally be treated as family by Emma and Lynn because I kind of feel like Eddie's like treated as his stepchild <laughs> so what do you think is season two gonna change up a little bit for Eddie and the relationship with Emma absolutely um, there's you know, there's a relationship that forges between them, the the two, the stepdaughters, the sisters, mm -hmm. and and Eddie, and and it's like uh, it's it's like walking on eggshells sometimes, mm -hmm. but there is this this unexpected stuff that does happen. The dynamic changes with them all, and it and it really just it forces you know the Emma character too to like be like. Well, I have to treat this situation a bit different than I was in season one mm -hmm. because she blames herself for what happened to Eddie. Okay. So there's that dynamic. Okay. And so she does come in and it's like Eddie is re basically relying on, on Emma, which is not comfortable for Eddie. It's not. So it's this fight and this wanting and this wanting pull, you know, that tug and pull. Mm -hmm. like. And then with, with Lynn, it's... She's like the, the, the other part of Vidalia, you know, that. Mm -hmm. it's like this... She has her own, and Eddie only sees the good. So that plays on to my next question as, do you think Eddie will become a little bit more stronger in her character for this next season? Where she's sure. not relying so much on Emma anymore. I think that it's gonna take, it's taking Eddie in season two to places that the audience is not expecting it. Okay. So she's gonna be challenged in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. Physically can't be moving, having to depend on others. So what can we expect from your characters in season two? Well, we have a lot more scenes together. Yeah, so okay, that's, that's good. That's, yeah. I mean, it's it's good. Like I think for us as as, yeah. as uh, actors, but then I think for both the characters, um, it's growth, you know, mm -hmm. and it's it's challenging. Yeah, and it's uh, it's in, it's cool to get to see them together and see the dynamic, see how they complement each other more so than they even realize. 
and, yeah. and them having fun for the first time because they've been apart for so long. They're mm -hmm. basically strangers, so they're getting to know each other. And it's it's beautiful. I love working with Mish. And, and we get to share a lot of season two, so it's great. Do you feel like after season one, have fans gravitated with more character more than the other? Like with Emma, Lynn, anybody, anybody hating, anybody loving your character? I, I, I think there's a little bit of both. I mean, yeah. I know, like, we were speaking to someone earlier who was like, oh my gosh, I'm so, I like, she was fully wearing a yellow outfit that, <laughs> because of Lynn, and that was really beautiful to yeah. see. I mean, also, I think it's so easy to play each of these characters as, like, one note. Okay. And I think what's beautiful about watching Melissa play a character like Lynn, mm -hmm. which could very easily be one note, is that there's so much texture and there's so much there under, even though she's superficial. Mm -hmm. But you can see that there's so many other things there, and I think that it makes it a much more relatable character. And I know for me with Emma, like that was the thing. It wasn't about just playing this like cold stone person. Mm -hmm. It's like what's she protecting, and like let's see those things, you yeah. know. What about your character? Do you feel anybody's been hating on oh, it? Oh yeah, so mm -hmm. much hate, but also so much yeah, love, so much which love. is very okay. interesting, because I had, <laughs> I think there was no in-between. I didn't mm. have people that were like, nah, whatever. It was like, I love her, I can see myself in her, and like, she's the best, uh -huh. and she's funny, and other people were like, I hate her. Really? Because of, you know, she going into that, Exactly. Breaking Johnny's relationship with mm -hmm. Carla and the baby that mama thing. and everything. Yeah. That so people, people were right very away, the home people were very offended by that. And the funny thing is that I hadn't even thought about it when mm -hmm. I was shooting it. I was just like so in Lynn that I was not even seeing the gravity of it until I saw the res the response on social media. But I think season two, we get to see new sides to both of the sisters, mm -hmm. and and just. M it makes them more human in a way that I think more people will be able to relate to yeah. both of them. How was it like filming in East LA? Are you now more familiar with the neighborhood? We didn't shoot that much yeah. in the East Side, actually. No, really? No, we because we we wanted to be respectful of the neighborhood. Shot a lot in um, Koreatown for yeah, uh, which Pico is, Normandy. Yeah, okay. Um, because the the bar is actually a uh, ninety nine cent store that was changed to make to look oh, like wow. a bar. Okay. Yeah. Because we were really respect. I mean, Tanya, I didn't make the choice, but I appreciated the choices being yeah. made, is that, you know, film sets take up a big footprint. And when you're talking about a neighborhood that is mm. uh, going, being, through. going through gentrification, the last thing you want to do is have, like, a Starline tour going through these neighborhoods yeah. and being like, there's the bar. Yeah, yeah So exactly. that was a big part of it as well. So many fans have been asking me since they knew I was going to interview today about the relationship with Johnny. Uh-huh. How would it play out? in season two is a drama still gonna play out is it like officially over because everybody's really loving the steamy scenes it's over okay. um, but but they're both now living a few blocks away from each other and okay. they're gonna be bumping into each other that's all I, I, I can say and there's a lot of anger so it's gonna be a very interesting season for both of them so how are you guys doing? Good, how are After you? After season one and everything, pretty big. I feel like everybody's talking about it. Nice. Hopefully. Especially <laughs> with Mari's character. She's very, I feel like, this outspoken activist mm -hmm. based on the gentrification happening in the neighborhood. And yeah. you're actually from East LA, right? Yeah, born and raised in East LA, Montebello. So has that character, playing that character, pushed you to be more active in the community now? Definitely, because I also just got to learn so much. My mom okay. was never political and I grew up with my mom, so I didn't know anything. Like, I knew Obama being president was a big deal, you know, but I didn't know like all the little details so just from working on this show I've done more research and like that has helped me a lot grow as a person mm -hmm. and then also just trying to connect to like if thinking like Mari like okay if they took out El Mercadito and they put a fucking Walmart I would be crushed yeah. you know or if they took out my tamales spot or you know and I connected that to myself mm -hmm. and that like I try to be like, the show in itself does a lot for the community and donates mm -hmm. and has these programs and stuff. So it's just, the fact that we're doing something feels great. I feel like at the ending of season one, there was a lot of cliffhangers with a lot of the characters and everybody was wondering what's gonna happen for season two, especially with the character of Johnny. How do you yeah. think the relationship is gonna play out with Lynn? What would you like to see happen with that relationship coming in um, season two? Well. Well, just, <laughs> keep, just keep in mind, you know, like Lynn is still in the neighborhood, you know, she's still mm -hmm. sticking around and, uh, and she left Johnny, you know, after he left his whole life to be with her, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so he's definitely, he's in a place right now to just kind of, he's trying to work things out with his baby mama, you know, trying to get it, keep his, get his life back in track. Um, but it's hard when you keep running into that person. That that you person. Like, mm -hmm. fuck, man, you're the reason I'm <laughs> feeling this way, you know. 
Um, he wants to have like ten babies with her. <laughs> I, I want to see that happen. I, I, I've been saying that I think I think that Johnny is. It's the idea of Lynn. Like the idea of being with her is yeah. is, is like oh man like. She's my everything, you mm -hmm. know. But uh, but then when they're together, it's like, fuck, dude. Um, it's a different story. <laughs> yeah, you know. I mean, no, it's not even like they're they're, they're together, and it's mm -hmm. just, and it's pa it's passionate and 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 and, and like and powerfully together, you know. But um, but there's so much history and there's a lot of toxicness that was already in its history. Okay. You know, so it's yeah. kind of like... It's complicated. It's complicated, right? It's a right? complicated yeah. relationship. It's a yeah. complicated status. I noticed also for season one with Madi, I feel like she always kept feeling that she could do more with her life. I know in one of the mm. scenes she was asking her friend, do you think it's ever late to change your life around? Do you think Madi will maybe take a different path in season two, maybe in changing her life around? Well, I think right now it's mainly what is that? Okay. Like, what does she want for her future? What does she really want? And what can she do to get there? And I think when you're, like, in the early 20s, you question everything. And I think that's where she's found herself at the beginning of season two. It's like, okay, what do I want? What do, what do I want my future to look like? What and makes you happy? Yeah, what, you know? And I think that that's where she's at. And mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting to see what she's going to have to do in order to well, one, she has to realize what the hell she wants. Mm -hmm. And then two, it's like, okay, so what are the steps to get there? Okay. And that's really interesting. And now with the show that it's actually becoming bigger and bigger, a lot of more people are talking about it. What do you guys would like to be a part of now in the future? Any other shows now coming up on your roster that you would like to be a part of? Game of Thrones already ended. Throw, hey, <laughs> throw me in, throw me in a Star Wars movie. Man. Oh, that's what you want to do? That's what you tell me. I gotta be in an episode. Though. I want to. I hate him because he was on Law and Order Special Victims Unit, and nice. I want to be on Law and Order Special Victims Unit. So that, like, honestly, cool, would yeah. be like dream come true. Yeah. How was it on Law and Order? Fun. It was. It was. Fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He that. got Ice T to do a promo for I, us. I, I really? Yeah, Ice T was the homie, man. Yeah. I had a friend that came out on the show, and oh, she what? had a scene with like Ice T and like one of the other detectives, and she said they were like the sweetest people, very down to earth, very. Oh, humble. so cool. But Ice T's dope, man. Ice T's yeah. dope. He was, we were just it, uh, real quick. It was like we were standing outside shooting a shooting something, and uh, it was just like a bunch of people kept coming mm -hmm. up to Ice T. And I see just said hi to everybody, man. And like somebody's like, man, how do you do this all the time, you know? And I, he was just like, you know, it's just these people kind of essentially pay your rent, you know what I mean? Yeah. These are your fans, like exactly. you are who you are. And, these uh, are the people that support yeah, you. Yeah, so it's like I, I, he looks at it. He was like, if I feel like I'm gonna, if, I, if people are going to the mall or something, for example, mm -hmm. like if I feel like I'm not up for it, then I just won't go out that day, you know what I mean? But okay. other than that though, it's just, yeah. and I thought that was really cool about him. Yeah, I was like, real true. player. I was like, yeah, that's, that's a nice like, up, perspective. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody loves the show. They I personally love good. the show. Yes, especially everybody's expecting for season two. And I noticed that this show tackles a lot of topics gentrification, cultural identities, racism. The list could go on. What will be new topics that maybe the show could touch on that maybe the Latino community hasn't highlighted yet? Well, it's not so much we don't because we don't think of the show th in topics when we when we build it. Mm -hmm. We just want to continue and deepen. So okay. that's what's happening season two, um, because we three hours of TV is like it's just a una probadita, right? Uh -huh. It's just a little it's, taste. Yes. So now we really get into it. Um, in every way. So like the, the deepening the sisters' relationship, deepening. Uh, um, all of it, you know, the, their stay and their reaction of, of the neighborhood to them. Really, now mm -hmm. we really get to see it. So it's more like we're deepening um, the storylines, the storylines, and and the themes. Okay. Except we don't we don't think in themes so much. We just sort of follow the 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 characters. I know you brought on two new characters, Did actors great. Raúl yeah. Castillo, Raúl Castillo. Roberta Colindres. Yes. Really great, and Raul, I believe, is from the show Looking. Yes. So what made you want to bring on these two new characters for season two? Well, Raul I've known since we were 14. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Roberta, I we've worked in theater together, too. Okay. So, I've no, I've no, so I knew those actors, and I knew the quality of their work. And we were we were just crafting these, you know, these characters mm -hmm. uh, organically in the writer's room. So it just they just appear. I can't tell you too much about Nico or B Baco, both those characters, because <laughs> you have to just sort of discover them, but but it uh, you'll see how perfect those actors are for those roles. Um, and but they are and they they add um, different coloring too. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we we haven't had a hyper masculine male on the show, you okay. know. Um, and now we have Raul, and you'll see he's like a former cholo, really. Um, yeah, tough guy. Yeah, tough guy. And you're like and and you know, he um, 
he clashes with Emma. She's not used to that. Oh I God. feel like that's coming yes. on from the first episode already. Yeah. I was just like, mm, I feel like something no, is going to be. Not, yeah, they're not friends. No. Yeah. Okay. But, but, but yeah, but it, but he's also he also represents a neighborhood. You okay. Know? Yeah, and that not you know he has a certain point of view about her like um, presenting uh, whiteness. Mm -hmm. You know, and he he tells her, and I, I love it as soon as they meet. He tells her. Now, I know you've written for previous shows, yes. such as Looking, I believe Devious Maze, yeah. which I was a fan of. Oh, nice. And I believe even Girls. So yeah, what makes minute. writing for Vida different from those shows? Well, I'm the boss here. Mm -hmm. So um, the story um, starts here. So, so, that, so that's the difference. You know, when you're a writer for hire, you are um, rendering a story for a showrunner. Mm -hmm. um, so you're, you're sort of trying to guess um, where they want to take it, you know, when you're pitching and stuff like that. So it, it it's just a different muscle. But okay. here it's a it's a purely like engendering mm -hmm. muscle, you know, so you're just you're And you have more power. You have more power, yeah. So that's better. That's know? fun. Yeah. So I know I ask fans what will be the number one question that they will want me to ask you. So a lot of fans had realized one of the episodes they wanted me to ask this question. So let's see if you know. Okay. Okay, so they realized in one of the bar scenes in the background they're playing a Costa Rican singer, Chabela Vargas. Uh, yes. Who was lesbian. Was that a special nod to her as an LGBTQ Latina? For having you since she had came out in the time where it was very taboo. I love that they noticed. Uh, she's Costa Rican, but she claimed Mexicanness a lot really? because she um, lived in Mexico most of her life. Yeah, Chavela Vargas is our gay icon. So um, even before she came out, we really we were yeah. So that was very much. Um, I'm glad purpose. they noticed. Yeah, I said to myself when I got amazing. this question, I was like, let me throw it out uh, there. I'm yes. not sure she's gonna know about we it. We paid but a lot of money for that song because it was so important to have. Really? Yeah. So uh, uh, Juan Gabriel uh -huh. also um, was in the uh, uh, one of his songs was in the first episode, mm -hmm. Chavela Vargas, and we also mentioned um, I forget what other like yeah it's it's very it's very specific it's a um, mixture of artists. Yeah, yeah, but 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 it's code switching to in this queer way. So mm -hmm. I'm so glad they noticed. Yeah.